This video contains spoilers for Genshin Impact's main story. If you have not yet finished the story from the original 1.0 version, as well as the recent 1.1 update, you may want to close this video now and return after you've completed it. You have been warned. A boy and girl stood amidst the tumult under an unfamiliar sky. You were a pair of traveling twins, passing through countless worlds during your journey, descending upon a continent named Tavat. You hoped that you would be able to enjoy your time here, but as you awoke among the falling stars, you saw the world in turmoil, a cataclysm raging across the land. You sought to leave this place and move on to the next world, but then an unknown god stood before you, barring the way. Looking down on you, the god took away your only kin, and you were sealed, cast into a deep slumber filled with nightmares. When you reawakened, the world was changed. The flames of war raged no longer, and nothing was left that looked familiar. Wandering the lands of Eastern Mondstadt for two months, the Traveler rescues Paimon, telling her the story of the encounter with the Sustainer. Paimon then joined the Traveler as a traveling companion, in hopes of helping the Traveler find their sibling. Heading west on Paimon's recommendation, towards Mondstadt, the Traveler resonates with the Animo Statue of the Seven. Shortly after, meets the Outrider Amber, who escorts the pair to Mondstadt, where the Traveler successfully uses the newfound Animo power to defend the City of Freedom from the dragon known as Storm Terror, which had been randomly attacking the City of Freedom for some time, causing a great deal of unrest. This gets the attention of the Knights of Favonius, leading the Traveler to meet Kaya, Jean, and Lisa, and later, the former Knight turned Vigilante, Deluc. They enlist the Traveler's help in dealing with the threats building at the nearby temples of the Four Winds. With completion of this task, and subsequent return to Mondstadt, Traveler and Paimon come across Fenty, who they had previously seen with Storm Terror shortly after their journey had begun. Playing to a crowd in the city center, he tells a story taking place hundreds of years ago of an innocent dragon which befriended a bard. But time passed. The dragon then called Devalin, while defending the city of Mondstadt, would become cursed by the blood of the dark dragon Durin, causing within Devalin great internal strife. Upon realization that the Traveler is able to purify the red tear-shaped gems which turned out to be the hate-filled tears of Dvalin, Venti devises a plan to steal the Holy Liar Durhamel from the Mondstadt Monastery in hopes of using the purified tears to restore the Liar to its former power, as in that state it may be capable of calming Dvalin enough for reason to prevail. Unfortunately, Venti was not the only one who wanted the Liar, the Fatui, having a vested interest in preventing Venti's progress with Dvalin, hoping to leverage the dragon's attacks into political partnership with Mondstadt, steal it just before the Traveler is able to get hands on it. Standing before the altar that previously held the liar, an understandable misunderstanding ensues. But as the Traveler had already curried favor with the Knights of Favonius, it is quickly resolved, and together the liar is retrieved and its power restored. Deluc proposes heading to Star Snatch Cliff, where Inventi would attempt to pacify Devalin with a song. However, as a result of the intervention by an Abyss Mage, this plan unfortunately fails, resulting in irreparable damage to the Holy Liar, and the revelation that the Bard Venti is actually the Animo Archon, Barbados. While the overall effort resulted in a setback, it was not without benefit. The group learns that the Abyss Order had been behind Devalin's corruption all along lying to the dragon, telling him that the city of Mondstadt and its Archon hate him, despite the dragon's previous efforts to protect the city, casting a spell which formed a seal, preventing a connection between the dragon and the Animo Archon from forming once again. This would need to be severed if Barbados was to make any progress with the Valen. Deluc knew exactly where to find answers. Having recently dealt with an Abyss Mage himself, he departed, quickly returning to the group with the location of the Abyss Mage, which had casted the spell. After its defeat, the group proceeds to confront Devalin in a more direct fashion. The resulting battle and removal of the dark blood clots from Devalin's back sees him finally freed from the corruption. The Animo Archon reminds the dragon that freedom is the gift of choice, releasing him from his self-imposed burden of protecting Mondstadt, which until now was eating away at his heart. Devalin returns to the skies, grateful. Upon returning to the City of Freedom, 
and returning the largely destroyed Holy Liar? A sinister plot is revealed after La Signora, the eighth of the eleven Fatui Harbingers, attacks, forcibly extracting and stealing Venti's Gnosis. Explained to be the physical vessel, which distinguishes a normal vision user or allogene from an Archon, Barbados, noticeably shaken and uncharacteristically melancholic, worried that the Cryo Archon and overseer of the Fatui, the Saritza of Snesnaya, may seek to steal the Gnosis from the rest of the Seven, and suggests that the Traveler proceed with haste to Liyue in search of the Geo Archon Morax, also known as Rex Lapis, as the window of time for meeting the Geo God is a short one. Armed with this knowledge, the Traveler set off to find the Geo Archon in hopes of uncovering any evidence of their siblings' whereabouts. But, Unbeknownst to the group from Mondstadt, while they were in Storm Terror's lair, unsealing the gateway to the top of the central citadel, the Traveler's sibling had already found them. We will be reunited, dear brother. But not here. Not now. We will meet at this journey's end, once the dust has settled. Then, you will understand. The Traveler arrives just in time for Rex Lapis' once yearly arrival in Liyue, known as the Rite of Dissension. But this year's rite doesn't go exactly as planned. Ningguang, the Tian Chuan of the Liyue Qixing, completes the ritual, only to find the lifeless exuvia of the Archon. Assuming that the god has been assassinated, Ningguang quickly orders the interrogation of those in attendance. The Traveler immediately seeks to flee the scene, but does not get far. The guard of Liyue, the Millilith, spot the pair escaping and give chase. As luck would have it, a mysterious vision holder arrives and eliminates the pursuing guards, instructing the Traveler and Paimon to follow him. Once reaching safety, their savior introduces himself as Child, who Paimon recognizes to be the 11th of the Fatui Harbingers. Always one to keep up appearances, he assures that he is not interested in a fight. He suggests speaking with the Adepti in Jueyun Karst might be the best course of action providing a sigil of permission which ensures the Adepti will not harm the Traveler during their search. Contractually obligated to protect Liyue through the passing ages, the Adepti, Zhao, Moon Carver, Mountain Shaper, and Cloud Retainer, after hearing of the death of their dear friend Rex Lapis, as well as the news of the tense situation in Liyue, each share a similar reaction one of distrust for humanity, particularly towards that of the Qixing, and the uncertainty of Liyue's Wei's continued prosperity under the Qixing's care in the absence of the Geo Archon. The Adepti decide that they should congregate and discuss their next move. Meanwhile, the Traveler returns to Child and Liyue, who introduces him to a close friend. An associate to the Fatui, Zhang Li of the Wangshun Funeral Parlor, is capable of taking the Traveler to see Rex Lapis's Exuvia, However, in order to do this, Zhongli enlists the Traveler's help in preparing the Geo Archon's last rites. This ritual required the collection of Noctilucus Jade, several perfumes, which would be offered to the nearby Statue of the Seven. The acquisition of the Cleansing Bell under the care of the Adepti, Madame Ping, several kites, helping hands to aid in the organization of the last rite, and finally, some everlasting incense. After a great deal of work, including the repair of the ancient and powerful Guizhong Ballista by Zhang Li, an entertaining misunderstanding regarding the origins of coconut milk, and a seemingly generous and well-timed donation from child, as a result of Zhang Li's perpetual absent-mindedness when it comes to Mora, the Traveler and Zhang Li had gathered all but the final ingredient to complete the rite. As Child departed the scene, his task complete, he was given intelligence by the receptionist of the Northland Bank, Ekaterina, that the exuvia of the Geo Archon had been taken to the origin site of Al Mora in Tevat, the Liyue Golden House. Ready to make his move, Child departs, with intent to claim Rex Lapis's gnosis for the Cryo Archon. Unaware of this, Zhang Li and the Traveler head to the third round knockout for a meal, whereupon the storyteller, Iron Tongue Qian, tells the story of Ningguang's all-seeing eyes, 
and the Marvel, which is her Jade Chamber, from which Ningguang gathers and reviews all knowledge regarding the trade and the economy of Tavat. Discussing the details of this story, Paimon begins to suspect that Ningguang might be responsible for the death of the Geo Archon, but before she could explore her line of reasoning too deeply, Gan Yu of the Liyue Qixing appears and extends an invitation to the Traveler to meet with Ningguang personally at the Jade Chamber in an effort to clear up any misunderstandings. Before departing for the Jade Chamber, Zhang Li asks that the Traveler meet with him in Dihoa Marsh to obtain the final ingredient for the Rite of Parting after the meeting with Ningguang has concluded. The Traveler agrees and proceeds on to the Jade Chamber. Struggling to find a way up to the Jade Chamber, the Traveler and Paimon return to the Guizhong Ballista that was repaired by Zhang Li. There they encounter the Yu Hung of the Liyue Qixing, Kuching, who is there investigating the surprising and unexpected repairs to the ancient device. She explains why Ningguang has requested the Traveler's presence and also how the Traveler can reach the Jade Chamber. A skeptic by nature and feeling that the time of the gods and Adepti is at its end, Kuching also explains, she expects that the Adepti are likely to be at arms against the Qixing soon, as they have probably assumed they are responsible for the death of Rexopus. After learning how to access the Jade Chamber from Kuching, Paimon decides that it would be best to arrive with a gift in observance of Liyue's greeting customs, undoubtedly hoping that in doing so, that the Tian Chuan will bestow upon her great riches in return. Always thinking with her stomach, Paimon decides that the gift should be the somewhat unorthodox snack she dreamed of the night before, sugar frosted slime. Paimon and the Traveler gather the ingredients, as well as an ornate box to present it in. Using the code phrase Kuching taught them, Paimon converses with the gatekeeper to the Jade Chamber, who proceeds to grant them access. The two meet with Ningguang. Paimon wastes no time buttering her up with their gift, which seems to be received well enough. Ningguang proceeds to inform the Traveler that she's been in correspondence with Jean back in Mondstadt in hopes of tracking the Traveler down for some time, revealing that those working for the Qixing have been observing them and reporting back on their movements since they first arrived at the Wangshu Inn while pursuing the Adepti Zhao. She speaks of the Archon Wars Resolution 2,000 years ago. She tells of the tales of the greatness of Rex Lapis's defeat over the ancient god Asile during the war, and also that the Archons themselves are not beyond death, and the inevitability that a new Geo Archon will appear in time. Ningguang segues all of this into refuting the likely suspicions mounting against her and the Qixing, mentioning that their enemies are hiding everywhere in the harbor, and her reasoning for interrogating the Rite of Dissension's attendees, as well as the quick actions of hiding the Exuvia, were meant to prevent the Qixing from losing the upper hand to the Fatui. Ningguang tells the Traveler all of this in hopes of gaining their trust, which Paimon uses as an opportunity to solicit a prize from the Jade Chamber in return for the gift of the Sugar Frosted Slime. Ningguang allows the two to choose any prize they wish from the Jade Chamber. While deciding which prize to claim from Ningguang's acclaimed wall, they discover intel detailing a location where it appears that the Fatui are researching the Sigil of Permission, as well as a vague connection between the Traveler and the Sigils as well. Paimon suggests going there to inspect what the Fatui are up to for themselves before going to see Zhang Li at Dihua Marsh. Upon arrival, they discover a large cache of Sigil of Permission copies. Unsure why the Fatui are copying the Sigils, the two decide to move forward, meeting up with Zhang Li. Once there, Zhang Li briefly passes on his thoughts on Ningguang, as well as the Qixing, before proceeding to explain his need for glaze lilies in accordance with the final step of preparations for the Rite of Parting. This did not go as expected. But as fate would have it, Gan Yu, who was on a stroll in the marsh to see the glaze lilies, stumbles on the Traveler, Paimon, and Zhang Li after the failed attempt to gain the petals. During this chance meeting, Gan Yu speaks of her grief over the loss of Rex Lapis and how he had been with Liyue Wei since its founding. 3,700 years ago. She also mentioned that he was the oldest of the seven, at over 6,000 years old. Ganyu goes on to say that Barbados is now the sole survivor of the original seven Archons of Tavat, and that all the others have changed over the past 2,000 years since the Archon Wars conclusion. She specifically mentions Sumeru's god of Dendro, who has only held the position for the past 500 years. Lastly, Ganyu reveals that she is of mixed lineage, that of human, in Chilin, and is actually an adeptus herself, having even fought for Rex Lapis during the Archon War, now contractually serving the Qixing on behalf of the Geo Archon's contract. At the conversation's conclusion, 
She gives the group some glazed lily petals, which she had collected during her stroll, having even sung a Liyue ballad to the flowers, in accordance with the rite of parting. Now able to return to Liyue with the lilies in hand, the group finds the Millilith have corralled all of the Fatui outside of the city. The reason for this is revealed to be as a result of Ningguang's concern that the Fatui may attempt to gain the upper hand while the Adepti are openly confronting the Qixing, regarding their role in the death of the Geo Archon. Paimon and the Traveler agree that this would indeed be an opportune time for the Fatui to extend their influence. Before quickly departing to see to matters at the Wangshun Funeral Parlor, Zhang Li suggests finding the root cause, which could further increase difficulties for the city of Liyue while the city's watchful eyes are distracted. The Traveler understood this cryptic statement about looking for the fuse to mean that they should find Child. The Traveler knows exactly where to find him, the Liyue Golden House. As revealed earlier, Child was indeed headed for that location. Paimon and the Traveler arrive to see that not only is the Exuvia of Rex Lapis here as anticipated, it is unguarded as a result of the Millilith being incapacitated. As if from the shadows, Child emerges with an attitude much less amicable than in meetings past. With his prize, the Geonosis, inside the Exuvia before him, and the Traveler the only obstacle standing in his way, he reveals his true intent and challenges the Traveler. In an epic battle, Child displays his strength in combat using not only the power of his hydrovision, but that of an artificial electrovision, known as a delusion as well. Just when he thinks he's won, the Traveler catches him off guard, utilizing the ability to manipulate both the Geo and Animo elements in tandem. Quick on his feet, however, Child takes this opportunity to attempt to prematurely end the fight and steal the Gnosis, only to find that the Gnosis was not within the Exuvia at all. Wrongly assuming that the Traveler had taken the Gnosis, Child unleashes his foul legacy transformation. Ultimately, the Traveler would be successful in overturning Child's advantage and convincing him that they had not taken the Geonosis. This drives Child to his final act of desperation. Reluctantly placing innocence in harm's way, he utilizes the powers granted by the many sigils of permission the Fatui had created to summon forth the ancient god, Asael, the overlord of the Vortex, sealed away by Rex Lapis 2,000 years ago. Child completes the summoning and makes a hasty escape. The Traveler and Paimon rush back to the Jade Chamber to find the ancient god looming over Liyue. Quickly, they are met by not only Ningguan and the Qixing, but the Adepti as well. The two groups join forces, agreeing to a temporary peace to quell the threat of the ancient Archon. Ningguang summons several Guizhong Ballista to be used by the Adeptus during the battle which ensues, but it wouldn't be so simple. Ordered by Child to help prevent the Adepti and Qixing from defeating Osile, the Fatui arrive in an effort to destroy the Ballista. Kuching and the Traveler, paired with powers gifted from Madame Ping, Ganyu, and Zhao, work to deal with the Fatui, giving the Adepti time to channel a powerful attack against the Sile. While the attack was powerful, it wouldn't be enough. The Overlord of the Vortex strikes back, destroying the Guizhong Ballista. With few cards left to play, Ningguang devises that the best hope for Liyue's Wei's survival would be to sacrifice the Jade Chamber, using it as a weapon against the Overlord of the Vortex. The Adepti channel all of their powers into the Traveler, who strikes the chamber propelling it downwards with great force, resulting in a massive explosion, resealing the ancient Archon beneath Guyun Stone Forest once more. Liyue spared, and the participants of the battle now safe, the Qixing and the Adepti resume their negotiations. Despite having just worked together to achieve victory, the two forces quickly find themselves at odds again. Ningguang reveals having had a vision of Rex Lapis in her sleep, during which she expressed her deep dedication to Liyue, and that not only the Adepti are contractually obligated to serve Liyue, but she conducts the Qixing as if they are under that same contract. This did little, however, to convince the Adepti of the Qixing's convictions, but as the negotiations continued, several of the citizens of the city arrive, thanking the Adepti for their part in protecting the city and empathizing with their many great sacrifices over the ages. Madame Ping helps the other Adepti to see reason. They proceed to reluctantly leave Liyue Wei to its new age of contracts. While the active conflicts have been resolved, Paimon exclaims that the matter of Rex Lapis's death cannot yet be closed, mentioning that Child's intent for summoning the Lord of the Vortex was to draw out the Geo Archon. But since he never appeared, she thinks that it may be prudent to seek out Zhang Li in order to see how he fared during the day's events, and to see what his thoughts on the situation may be. 
When they arrive at the Wangshun funeral parlor, however, they're informed that he's gone to the Northland Bank to speak with the Fatui. Fearing that he may be in danger, Traveler and Paimon rush to the bank. When they arrive, not only do they find Zhang Li, but also Child and Senora. Here it is revealed that not only was Rex Lapis not dead, but Zhang Li was in fact the Lord of Geo himself, revealing a contract between the Geo and Cryo Archons to surrender the Geonosis willingly. The reasoning for this? The Geo Archon had recently begun to feel, as if his purpose in Liyue had been fulfilled. Seeking to retire from his role as Archon, the contract specified that Rex Lapis would fake his death, allowing for an elaborate test unbeknownst to the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Chising, who would play out their expected roles. All of this was in order to see if Liyue Wei would be capable of maintaining its prosperity and security in the Geo Archon's absence. This was agreed to with the caveat that Rex Lapis would intervene if required to spare the city of any actual tragedy. Upon the plan's conclusion, pleased with the result, no longer feeling the connection to his Gnosis as he once did, he fulfills the contract, surrendering the Gnosis to Signora. Paimon questions what could have possibly been offered to Rex Lapis to exchange his Gnosis with the Tsaritsa in this contract to end all contracts, but the Geo Archon, now just Zhang Li, reveals that he is not permitted to speak of it in accordance with the terms of his agreement, and that the Traveler should look to find the answer along their future journeys. While in the end, the Geo Archon had not actually died, as far as the city of Liyue was concerned, he had. As such, the rite of parting still required completion. The city mourns the loss of their Archon, but is reminded by Ningguang that they are a strong people, capable of saying farewell to their Archon and working towards a new and prosperous age. The rite concludes, and Kuching approaches the Traveler, offering whatever compensation is deemed suitable for his part in averting the city's destruction. With not but one task in mind, the Traveler's ultimate goal is still that of finding their sibling, making but a simple request. Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? Before departing the rite, the Traveler and Paimon spot Zhang Li, looking at peace while overlooking the city he once served. When they speak with him, he offers to buy them a meal in Xinyua Kiosk, but Paimon calls him out for his typical cluelessness regarding Mora. Zhang Li is thankful to the Traveler for helping him retire from his role as the Geo Archon. He informs the two that Child and the Fatui are currently dealing with a lot of backlash from Ningguang as a result of attacking the Guizhan Ballista during Osail's assault, which has certainly weakened relations between Liyue and Shnesnaya. Zhang Li gives the Traveler advice on where to head next. Fearing difficulties will be experienced gaining access to the neighboring nation of Inazuma, informing the Traveler that Inazuma is currently a closed nation, suspecting that some serendipity would likely need to come into play in order to gain access. The Electro Archon, Ball, also known as the Eternal Shogun, for the past year, has enacted something known as the Vision Hunt Decree. This order is in place to seize all visions within the borders of Inazuma, which are then inlaid upon the hands of a statue of the Thousand-Armed, Hundred-Eyed God. As Zhang Li sees it, she has stopped issuing Electro Visions and is reclaiming all visions within her borders, as it may be likely that as the God of Eternity, she sees them as a threat to her eternal realm. Zhang Li finally finishes the conversation by expressing some concern that the knowledge of the Geo Archon's supposed death may strengthen her resolve to empower her stance among the remaining seven. And there we have it, the entire story of Genshin Impact thus far. What serendipitous event do you think will take place? which will allow the Traveler the fortune to travel to Inazuma. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it on the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you are notified when my next video goes live. Lastly, join the Teyvat Historia Discord server. You'll find a great community providing useful links to Genshin content and illuminating discussions regarding Genshin Impact's lore, theory crafting, and mechanics. Thanks for watching Teyvat Historia. May the seven guide you, travelers.